Thank you once again for joining us today at Matoka TV Studio. Alright, in this video you are about to watch right now, the God servant, Apostle Arame Osai revealed three shocking secrets to the body of Christ. Three things you need to practice daily in order to strengthen and build a solid relationship with God. And I show you this clip is going to bless your life so much. All right, over to you, sir. There are so many resources available in the landscape. The operating system is, is the operating system of the grace of God. So much is in the expanse, is in the territory. And because of lack of education, uh, our output is so little because we want to escape intimacy and just speak in tongues away. Meanwhile, the Bible went deep to reveal to us the kind of relationship that Moses and God had. It was not formal. It was a friendship. And, and that was the only way it could be for Moses to be comfortable in God's presence so that God can educate him. It was obvious subsequently that um, Moses had learned the ways of God. How did he, what school did he go to? The school of intimacy. That's where God came to teach him his ways teach him how he operates if we go to this con this congregation and we administer a questionnaire you might be afraid at a level of ignorance of the god that we claim to serve. level of ignorance if you are not used to the protocol of intercourse you will not learn nothing you can keep speaking in tongues for so many years and the issues around your life that limit your possibility are still going to be there but when you begin to learn from the lord and the Lord spake unto Moses as a man will speak unto his own friend. You will think that when the mighty God shows up and he wants your attention, you will think what he will bring will, will be very serious. Then he will tell you about your impatience. <laughs> and for the next two months, he's locked in your head. Impatience 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 it will take you that level of dealing for you to now begin to see the things that leak out of your life just because of impatience then you will not find out that there's something called anxiety and whatever situation that opens the door to anxiety anxiety begins to manipulate your soul and at the end of the day anxiety will lead you to a point where it opens the door to the spirit of infirmity then eventually you'll find out that the reason why you were afflicted was not because of the situation that opened the door to anxiety you were afflicted because of anxiety he comes to give you lectures and his lectures are prophetic when he begins to teach you about fear how that you should not fear in january just know that there's something going to happen in june you have no possibility of escaping the things that will happen in june if you don't take the lectures that he brings to you in january seriously so the challenge with adam was that adam left school and so when the instructor came to teach he, he said adam what where are you you, are, you have not been in school that's what i'm saying you've been out of school and the teacher came with the teaching aid, came with the um, projector, came with everything to begin a lecture and the student had a loot. And for a long time, many of us have not reported to school. So you just started life on, on like a conveyor belt. And there are several deep things you should have picked up in simple, simple encounters with God that, that you don't have. So when the storms come, they reveal your depth because it is your level of intimacy that is going to be equivalent to your level of faith. If you don't know God, for God's sake, how can you believe him? Adam, where art thou? Please help me tell your neighbor. It's the same question the Lord is asking this evening. Where art thou? Where art thou? You left school, left training, and you're on the field running naked. He knows that the next time you meet with the devil, you are going to crash land. And there are so many intensive care units now because people took off without any debt. And so Jesus has to run clinics to rehabilitate so many people. And the Lord spoke this thing that is written in this one scripture it will take you some time before you get to this school even with the Holy Ghost in your heart because that person that man that woman that that is so eager to rush and run away you don't deliberately schedule an appointment with God it doesn't matter how you, where you walk you walk in Zenith Bank Pastor John you walked in Zenith Bank for many years do you guys walk on Sunday you don't, you don't walk on Sunday so it doesn't matter your work schedule it is compulsory for you to attend school where he comes and speaks to you 
face to face that school you are the only student in that school god has the facility to run zoom zoom lectures for only one student he doesn't need to gather us as a community because your own curriculum is consistent with your calling it's specific to you it's idiosyncratic it's not it's not national i came to challenge you this this evening what what have you really learned from the school of intimacy what do you know about yourself what do you know about your family what do you know about the calling that god put in your family because every tribe has a grace the sons of Isaac, the bible says were men that understood the times and knew what israel ought to do that was a family grace that was upon the people and they knew it and they were working in it what do you know about the grace that was designed for your family you've not been to school so a lot about your identity is has not been received you are just trying out life with the few five pebbles of stones that you have in your hand hoping that one of the shots will bring the giant down Let me let me give you an idea building intimacy with god is something that you do consciously deliberately and daily it's conscious it's deliberate and it is daily the first thing that i want to tell you about first requirement if you want to build that structure in your life because the the, the reason for the metaphor of the tabernacle of moses is that god wants you to engage him personally and intimately if you're going to have a, an intimate relationship with God, the first thing that is needful for you to do is to discard a certain kind of haste that is part of the fall that is locked in your soul. When, when we call for a prayer meeting, have you noticed? You have not noticed? There's a haste in your soul. Alright? You will need to murder that haste. You need to kill it. That haste is one of the strands of the fall of man. Because since man became a rebel, he doesn't want to stay in God's presence. He moves out of god's layer so there's that haste that is in your soul that you need to conquer you need to conquer by subscribing to patience waiting in the presence of the lord the second thing you will need to do is to learn how to speak to god now most of us for most of us prayer is very formal our god that is in the third heavens that sits as a luminary governor among the nations yeah may the lord help us in the name of jesus <laughs> In this school prayer is not that formal prayer is like talking to god and one thing you must understand is that god does not talk much god only answers much so if you stop talking you stop getting answers you will initiate god's answers in this school you initiate it you initiate god's answers keep talking as you as you as you walk on the streets you are going to the office you are taking a car and if you are lucky you are not driving keep talking you see, your heart is in such a way that it can speak without a vocal expression. Your heart is designed like that. Your heart has a vocal cord. And you can mobilize your heart to begin to communicate with God and speak to God. You will find out, you will find out after a while. Just keep doing it every day, every day. A time will come when you try to, you set out, he will answer you. He doesn't speak much. And he only answers much. And you will need to develop a culture of perpetually speaking. In order for you to come to that point where he's willing to begin to strip himself before you this is a very secret school and only moses gets to activate the possibilities of the school and i'm praying that you will be that moses that moses that will activate the possibilities that are locked up in in a mysterious place called the tabernacle it's accessible but it's covered it's enclosed so the things happening inside are not are not are not up for everybody to view hallelujah and it's like a boot and only one person has very good accommodation inside actually so it's designed for your personalized engagements so you will need to schedule your heart program your heart to begin to commune communicate talk to god. start with your problems that's a good place to start oh god can you see i'm crying are you not seeing in that school it's not formality everybody's real there he speaks to moses like a man will speak unto him. if you have a friend Sister Cole, if you have a friend, won't you tell her your, you know, your challenges, the kind of stuff. That's, that's, that's how the person will know that you have accepted her as a friend. You can open up. You can say, there is a challenge in the family. This thing I'm telling you is going to be, you have to cut it. The next thing you will do when you learn how to speak to God, speak with God, is that you will learn how to practice obedience. The Holy Spirit is not powerful in a vessel where his authority is not acknowledged 
you know jesus actually slept in the boat and there was a storm but jesus was sleeping and he snored oh hallelujah so what releases jesus for, for action is not danger in the face of so much danger jesus was snoring oh now the reason why i brought that that scripture is because he can sleep in your life too and for many of us he's been dozing he's he has gone to even buy um an orthopedic bed because it's a good place for snoring in order for you to engage jesus engage the holy ghost you must make him lord you must you must establish that he is worthy to be obeyed so when you wake up in the morning one of the things you tell god as you're going out is i want to obey you meanwhile in your office there are very terrible people there the, the only thing they need is spiritual arrows too that is what they really need to cut them down but you know that there's a war front in your office you just want to obey god it's difficult to do it there are terrible people there but i want to obey god and you go there there's somebody that is on your neck is willing to make you lose your temper every morning by 9 30 a.m And then the first day you tell God, I want to obey you. That person will offend you by 9.30. And they will say, your father, your ancestor. Come as an animal. Then you remember that, ah. I said I wanted to obey you. Then you go into a, to a corner, you repent. I say, Lord, you see. If you don't help me on these matters, I'm going to, I don't know. I don't know what I'm capable of right now. But, And then tomorrow again, you tell him, I want to obey you. A similar thing is going to happen tomorrow. But the way you responded the first day is not the way you will respond the second day. There's going to be an improvement, a little improvement. And then in six months' time, you'll be, you'll be fully aligned. Anyone that wants to build anything with the Holy Ghost must take obedience seriously. You will check every area of your life and align it with the instructions of the Word of God. And you begin to practice the instructions of God deliberately. You will not do it in your dream. You will do it with your brain working. All of this that you are doing is is alignment you are gathering yourself together the reason why those israelites didn't want to take advantage of the tabernacle the possibilities of the tabernacle was they, they they know that god won't leave any aspect of your life hanging out everything must be brought together and be submitted to the authority of the christ it is when that level of of alignment begins to come into place god is willing to speak say this one has accepted my government this one has accepted my rule my command tower has been discovered by this one so it's ready to speak out of the cloud it's ready to speak out of the infrastructure and you begin to hear his whispers his whispers do not come necessarily as hardcore instructions he will just speak like a passerby if your heart has been angulated to function under his government you will take his instruction he, he, see he will not say hey no I say, ah. after you finish telling your husband about his grandfather then he'll just pass by and say i thought you knew i thought you knew better you just pass by if your heart is angulated to know his voice you should break down at that point and begin to repent but you see he, he won't do more than that oh you wake up one day on monday morning and you want to head to the feet because you found one yogurt at at the palms you bought two copies of yogurt and you want to head there and then there was this faint feeling fast it will come only twice it will come only twice very faint very faint very insignificant it will, it will pass on your heart twice he, you, you, you are likely to ignore it but that invitation was an invitation into pilgrimage in God you are not likely to, to know about that flash if you have not prepared your heart for engagement he will just flash and the second flash is going to be weaker than the first one those that are wise understand his call and they will now ally and leave the yogurt then he will show you something greater than yogurt that day because the language that the immortals understand is the language of sacrifice you have to let something go in order for you to enter into something in god if you don't know sacrifice you you take everything you take tom tom you take anything you are, oh if you don't know sacrifice you will become old and your life will not count he begins to teach you sacrifice teach you sacrifice you just make a big break a big breakthrough and then he asks for 50 percent say go and drop 50 and and he will not he will not say it twice it just it will just pass you will know he's him he will give you the grace to be able to discern him when he passes and he will come in a very faint manner it is when you begin to practice obedience deeper obedience that the the hold of that voice the hold of that perception becomes stronger becomes more your, your receptacle becomes more articulated to to, to uh, if there's no one that became intimate with god that 
that it just happened by accident it's, it's something that must be cultivated because God was he, the tabernacle was there he said preach it there but he didn't come to invite people into the tabernacle it's something an initiative you need to take by yourself the more you practice that level of fellowship and you are willing to obey the more you are going to begin to discover that the voice of God is going to become stronger he will test you in the area of money test you in the area of submission to your husband he will test you in the area of love to your wife one day you just say woman then he will now he will pass at, at your back and say don't talk to my daughter like that and you just pass if you are wise go and look for a guitar and play and sing for her oh my god you good for me oh you you don't come on here may the lord give you understanding may the lord give you get that guitar that rusty one come, 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 come. And, and begin to he will look at you and say yes you are making an effort yeah. you are beginning to understand the authority of my words you are taking me seriously yes and then he comes in the night when you have done that and you have said your wife is happy even she joins you in the dance you don't know why you are even that she doesn't know that he passed by your back and whispered and then you finish that and you go to sleep and then he comes with a lamp in the night and say it is for this cause that I have called thee that you will turn men from darkness to light from the power of darkness unto the kingdom of God he will never tell you anything serious until you can obey little things it's, it's primary school that's why we learn ABC most of you took off like a tornado you didn't attend primary school you were a dropout you were saying where are you where are you meanwhile you have joined Unilag <laughs> You have, jumped. <laughs> you, have, you have enrolled somewhere. Meanwhile, here is absent. You are a small man in a big body. When Satan shows up, you'll be no match. Because you have not yet learned the wisdom of God. You will take obedience seriously. Obedience serious. Obedience serious. You are the one paying the bills as a wife. You are the one, you know, paying the children's school fees. You renew the rent. You, you pay for the fixing of the car and all of that and then you your husband says something then you just remind him hey what are you are you then you'll pass your back and you'll drop it he said but i didn't teach you this one i didn't teach you this one if you are wise you will change it to a song instantly you just start singing start singing start when he sees your effort to obey your effort may not be good enough but at least you you are you attempted he knows that your heart is angulated to acknowledge his kingship his position his government yeah you are you are you are in the right place you are in the right place and then he opens and that's how grace comes that's how grace comes and when you find more grace your husband in that state will be elevated just because of you favor will shine on him the bible says and god remembered abraham you know in the in the negotiation that abraham did concerning sodom and gomorrah uh, lot was the objective Say, well, Lord stayed for so so time, he must have evangelized. And I'm sure that uh, he's a profitable man to the kingdom of God. So there must be at least 10 righteous people in the landscape. Uh, meanwhile, there was a statement that Abraham made that caught God's attention. Abraham wouldn't have gone further with negotiation. He, he said, Will you destroy the righteous and the wicked? He would have stopped it. But God didn't answer. Because he, he, he caught God there. But he went to negotiate okay 50 if you find 50 if you find then he stopped at 10. so according to the negotiation lot was to be crushed with fire because lot was not productive it was just his household that was fed that was righteous that passed the test and the body bible says that and god remembered abraham this was not part of the negotiation that we're talking about and god did what he remembered abraham because of his remembering abraham he sent deliverance to, to that was mercy and the message was was as a result of an intimacy he found with abraham do you know that because of your own intimacy with god god can look upon your husband and say you will not die you will not die because you are in this woman's life and this is my daughter's life this is my daughter that has honored me like this you will live you will live lord would have thought that it was the night vigil he engaged in that that led to his deliverance that only am i mercy the bible said that it was abraham that god remembered and sent redemption to love there are so many things that god does for an intimate fellow prayer is on three levels you can pray to god as father 
you can engage God as a judge you can also engage God from the standpoint of friendship these are the three levels of prayer and when you are engaging God as a friend there are many rules you break many rules many you will hear people like Abraham say if I found favor in your sight is 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 intimacy is a currency for negotiation if just if I have found what favor in your sight these are men that have discovered the technique of how to move the hand of God where are you 